Good morning. Thanks to Stacy, Donna, and the Foundation for giving me the opportunity to share some of my experiences and perspectives. I wish we could all be physically together, but we'll do our best in these challenging times. And please excuse my less than formal presentation attire. I think my team CCF shirt is quite appropriate for its Wear Green Day. The wife of a very good friend of mine had breast cancer. He described her talking about the disease as being ever present, even if it was sometimes in the background. She said, picture what they call the crawl across the bottom of the TV set, silently reading, you've got cancer, you've got cancer. And then periodically it would blow up and be all consuming, taking up the entire screen. Sound familiar? My objective today is to share some perspectives developed over the past seven years of living with cholangiocarcinoma. In a typical day, I go to the cholangiocarcinoma warrior site on Facebook once or twice. It's both inspiring and sobering, often at the same time. To the other patients out there, I can't get rid of your cancer any more than I can get rid of mine. But maybe I can provide some thoughts of how to make the journey a bit less scary and maybe have you think of some ways you can deal with all this stuff a little better. These are the five themes I'd like to present. Hope comes from knowledge, explore and act on options, make plans and live your life, be active, and you're not alone. I have to tell you that I wonder why my remarks and story should be special to the rest of you. In many ways, I consider my story to be quite unremarkable. And as we'll discuss, my journey has been relatively easy compared with so many of you. But we're all remarkable in our own way, certainly to be here in the face of this very tough disease. I'll start with my story to set the stage. But most of all, I wanna share some bits of wisdom, or at least I think it's wisdom, gained along the way. In that regard, my comments are most geared to those in the earlier stages of fighting this disease. Now, my journey. I was diagnosed in February 2013 with extrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. We all know how it felt like getting hit by a ton of bricks when you first heard the diagnosis. I was 62 years old and absolutely, quote unquote, not ready to go. But after the initial devastating news, it steadily got somewhat better. I was relatively lucky. I had early detection because the tumor constricted my bile duct, creating the typical symptoms of jaundice, pale stool, etc. It all went real fast from the initial diagnosis. And for that, I thank my care team at Kaiser Permanente and Piedmont Hospital in Atlanta. I had the Whipple surgery within no more than three weeks of my initial diagnosis. I was considered stage one because all I saw was the tumor that was removed with no evidence of spread after testing some 60 lymph nodes. My first setback came about a day before I was supposed to be discharged. I had a serious leak of pancreatic fluid or gunk that required a second surgery. A CT scan failed to reveal the specific problem, and I vividly remember my surgeon saying, I'm not sure what's going on, but we've got to go back in there, find out, and fix it. The second surgery was a real setback. It beat me up pretty good and made my recovery longer. I figure I lost about 30 pounds off a frame that was pretty lean to start with. I followed the Whipple with adjuvant radiation then 12 administrations of Gemsys. I was declared NED as of October 2013. I remained NED into early 2017 and was starting to get the proverbial fat, dumb, and happy. So was my oncologist, by the way. But a recurrence was confirmed in early 2017. Many of us know that can be another ton of bricks. In some ways, may be harder to deal with than the first. 
So another 12 administrations of GEMSYS. I was again declared NED in October 2017. This was becoming a real emotional roller coaster, but with an increased sense of realism, but not fatalism. Growth in the same area was again confirmed in the summer of 2018. This time, six administrations of GEMSYS didn't shrink, but only held the tumor at bay. Over this time, I moved my primary oncology care to the specialists at the Winship Cancer Center at Emory University in Atlanta. Surgery by Dr. Shashir Maithel in February 2019 removed the tumor and an involved lymph node. Many of you may know Dr. Maithel, who serves on the Medical and Scientific Advisory Board of the Foundation. But my CA199 reading which has always been pretty predictive for me, never dropped, and another lymph node was found in late spring of last year. We explored options such as targeted radiation, second-line chemo, and another surgery. I decided to go on the Yaliva trial, sponsored by Red Hill Biopharma. The protocol is ABC108, in October of last year. My supervising oncologist at Emory is Dr. Mehmet Akshay. I get scanned every two months on this trial, and I'll tell you, scanxiety has never been greater. Hoping for stability, if not shrinkage, and hoping to remain on the trial. As of the taping of this presentation, my most recent scan was in May, my blood work is all good, and I still officially have stable disease. But my CA-199 readings continue to rise. There has been some suspicious areas noted on my two most recent scans, and I'm experiencing some new discomfort in the impacted area. I'm prepared to have growth or spread confirmed at some point, and I'll have to consider next steps. I can provide an update from the July scan at the conference. Yes, this is a journey. As several of you have heard me say, my objective is to keep kicking the can down the road until a treatment is found that can have me beat this thing. My line with my oncologist from the very beginning was my plans to die from something other than cholangio. What I most want to share today are some themes that have become part of me through this seven plus year long journey. Okay, hope comes from knowledge. Really? Think back to when you first heard about Colangio and you Googled this stuff. You got scared you know what -less pretty quickly, right? But as you explore more, you start to get a sense of the resources that are currently available and the increasing resources that are going into efforts to treat and ultimately beat this disease. The CCF is high among these resources. To me, knowledge is empowering. There are more opportunities than ever for patients to learn about the disease, and most importantly, their options to treat it. Knowing what to ask your medical team, what to explore, not to be unrealistic, but to understand this is not a one-size-fits-all disease, and thus there are multiple possible paths to potentially successful treatments. The range of treatments undergone by our fellow patients tells some of that story. Be an informed patient, not a victim. As an extension of Hope Comes from Knowledge, dig into the options that are out there. Get genomic testing. Mutations do matter. I've had it done twice, first through Foundation Medicine, then through Claris. I haven't had any real targetable mutations. But some of you have and will, and some of our greatest success stories come from this route. Get the best medical team you can, especially look for oncologists and surgeons who are experienced with cholangio. The CCF has a way to search for these professionals. Push them on the various options that might help you. Is it surgery, radiation, chemo? Supplement with alternative meds if that's right for you. Pay attention to your diet. I've certainly eaten better since my initial diagnosis, but I've never gone on any strict diet. I've developed some better habits. 
like making a protein shake each morning for breakfast, protein powder, yogurt, a banana, some other good stuff. I very much look forward to Dr. Lee's keynote presentation on Friday for thoughts on how I might do better. There's definitely evidence that lifestyle choices can improve your likelihood of success in this battle. Yeah, it's easier said than done to make plans and live your life. But if you go and sit back and just go, woe is me, the cancer's winning. I found that it's been most helpful to have goals and objectives, many of them short term to be sure, but some longer term and all things I can look forward to. None of us is promised tomorrow, but take advantage of tomorrow when it comes and the tomorrows after that. I've had the rewarding experience to be a mentor in the Clangio Connect program. One of my mentees was really challenged to think about things just several months ahead of her. I tried to encourage her to make these plans, to look forward to things you want to experience, and God willing, be there to experience them. This photo of my family was taken in 2017 on a trip to Italy. Be as active as you can. I've been fortunate. I was in pretty good physical condition for an old guy when I was first diagnosed, and I've done my best to maintain decent shape ever since. I've been more fortunate than many or most that my disease and treatments have not kept me from doing most of the things I like to do. I've been able to keep running, even if at my age, may be better described as shuffling. I had hoped to go back to Spain in April to walk my third Camino de Santiago, some 500 miles on ancient pilgrimage routes. That, of course, had to be postponed, but it's still one of my goals to get back there, maybe this fall, more likely next year. Goals are important. You don't have to run or walk 500 miles to get benefit. There's clear evidence that physical activity can help during treatment and recovery. Yes, we all have limitations, but we also all have possibilities. Do something every day and try and do just a bit more tomorrow. Do whatever's most meaningful to you. Two steps forward and even with one step back, you're still ahead. Finally, you're not alone. I wish we were all together so we could look around at this collection of patients and caregivers. Think about the support and information provided by the various Facebook groups and the discussion board of the CCF. Support doesn't cure this cancer, but it sure can make the journey better. Knowledge, concern, care, these are things that come from your fellow patients and caregiver, our caregivers. I'm a bit preaching to the choir here because you've already made the investment to participate in this conference, but all of us can gain from the support of one another. Be open to sharing and gaining the benefit of what we all can offer. Thanks for your attention and best wishes to all of you.